Hello, my name is Jeff Odell and I live in Tampa, Florida in the United States of America. This video is my video lesson number two for the Introduction to Music Production course at Coursera.org. I will be demonstrating using Sends in Ableton Live 9. For this demonstration, I'm using Ableton Live 9 intro, meaning anything I do in this demonstration could be done in any version of Ableton Live. Also, I'll be living primarily in the arrangement view of Ableton uh, and producing the sounds and setting up the sends from this view. So let's take a look at the audio we'll be using for our demonstration. And what we've done is dropped two pieces of audio on two separate tracks in the Ableton timeline. And what we'll do to audition them is simply use a selection tool, turn on loop, press play and take a quick listen to what the audio sounds like without any effects applied. Okay, what we'd like to do then is send some of this audio to a common track that would apply some effects. And we're going to use two different effects today, but we'll start with the reverb. So in order to add a return track to Ableton Live, we need to simply do one of three things. We can go up to the Create menu and say Insert a Return Track. You see we have a function key also, Control-Alt-T on Windows. Or we can right mouse click the Master Track uh, Mixer area and drop in the uh, Return Track. And by doing so, you'll notice something happened. It didn't appear. And that's typical of Ableton if you don't have certain parts of the user interface enabled. So over here we see a series of buttons. In this series there's an R button and that's for return tracks. And that gets our return track uh, visible. And uh, one of the things that's uh, customary to do is to do some color coding so that we'll have them stand out. So let's have our return track be in bright orange so that we can see it. The next step then is to add the effect into our return track. So for our first effect, we'll go over to the Ableton uh, selection area here and we will look for reverb and we'll pick something that's kind of big so that we'll be able to hear it. So we'll take the hall preset and we'll use the spacious setting and we've dropped it in our audio effect area. So now we have this effect in here. Now this will have no effect until we actually send some audio to it. So let's start with our percussion track right here. By clicking on this um, control right here, we can start to raise and you can see inside the track to a red line indicating that we're raising and lowering the audio that's being sent to the send track. So let's start it up and raise it from nothing to the top and we'll see what happens. Let's also solo that track. Actually, turn off. Just turn off the bass track. All right, here we go. Oh, and now we can really hear the echo come in and really go off. So let's stick with what we kind of like. Let's go about about there. Okay. One thing you'll notice is that Ableton, by default, has dropped the control in completely wet. In other words, the only thing that's going to the send is, uh, or coming from the, uh, the send, is the uh, audio effect and none of the dry signal. If we want to hear that, we can solo the send down here. So let's just do that real quick. And there you hear just the reverb effect coming from that particular track. Let's continue by sending that audio uh, audio from our bass track into the send. In order to do that, we just simply go to this control, we enable it, and we start moving it, and let's play at the same time. And we'll also, this time, mute our percussion track. And that can get mushy fast. Let's back it off. Okay, so uh, all taken together. And we have a little 
little bit more room and spaciousness in our sound. Let's uh, turn it off and on just to hear the difference. Here's off. And here's sound going to our sound track. Now you're not limited to one send track, although in Ableton Live Intro you are limited to two send tracks. Uh, other versions allow you to have more. Let's add another uh, return track here. And let's add into here something fun. So I thought we might go to something like the grain delay and throw in, I don't know, rush. Okay, so it doesn't have to be just um, reverb or delays. It could be any effect that you can put in a send track. Now you'll notice on both of our audio tracks, we have an additional control for controlling that. So let's just hear what this sounds like with just the drum. Turn. So it kind of crunches and makes some kind of cool sounds. Let's back it off a little bit. And then let's take it all together. So now we've got a pretty cool sound. Well, this red line that we've been seeing going up and down here is specifying a level, but it's actually the automation uh, points being shown. So one of the things we could do for an effect is let's start with the crunchy rush sound all the way down. And then let's take it and we'll go into draw mode here. See, I gotta, gotta get a grip on it first. There we go, go into draw mode. And let's about halfway through our clip, just start adding the effect. So now instead of it being on all the time, it'll kind of rotate in and out. And let's have a listen to what that sounds like. No effect. Here it comes. Drops off. at the end there. So I hope that gives you an idea of how to create return tracks in Ableton 9, how to send um, audio to those tracks, how to set up various effects on those tracks, and then apply automation to the send to give you variability in how much audio is going to the return tracks. Thank you.